In this video, I'm going to talk about parallax, which is the method that we use to find the distance to the nearest stars. And it turns out that this is very important because this will become the basis of how we find the distance to pretty much anything else in the universe. Um, we have to use parallax to calibrate all of our other methods. Uh, so this is a very important idea. And the concept of parallax in itself is something you can actually encounter in everyday life. Um, if you hold your finger up in front of your eyes, kind of like you see in this picture here, and then you close your left eye, you can sort of see where your finger is compared to the background. And then if you switch eyes and you close your right eye and keep your left eye open, it'll, your finger will appear in a different place compared to the background. It looks like your finger jumps if you close one eye than the other repeatedly, it'll be like your finger is jumping back and forth. Of course, you know that your finger isn't moving. You're not moving your hand. You're just opening and closing one eye. But it looks like there was a change because you are looking at your finger from different angles with your different eyes. And that's parallax. Parallax is when the apparent position of an object compared to the background seems to change when you look at it from different angles. Now, in astronomy, this happens uh, with stars. As the Earth orbits the Sun, nearby stars will appear to change their position compared to the background. So what you see here, I've sort of drawn a very, very, very not to scale picture of the Earth going around the Sun and I've depicted um, the Earth in two different months. And we're focusing on this orange star that's relatively nearby compared to these red, white, and blue ones in the background. If we look at these, we'll see that um, when we start with the Earth in January and we're looking at the orange star, it will appear as if it's about here, somewhere between the white and blue stars um, in January. But in July, it will appear up here, somewhere between the red and the white stars. So this nearby star, the orange one, seems to shift back and forth as the Earth orbits the Sun. And we would call this stellar parallax. And it's this apparent shift in a star's position because Earth is orbiting around the Sun. And in fact, the existence of this parallax proves that the Earth orbits the Sun. If the Earth were sitting still, um, then parallax would not occur. However, it turns out this parallax is very, very hard to see because stars are really small. Or sorry, excuse me, not stars are very small, but the um, distance to stars is very large and the angle that they shift by is very small. So, um, you can like think about doing the experiment with your finger again. If you hold your finger farther away from your eyes, you'll see that the shift is much smaller than it is when you hold your finger very close to your face. Same thing goes for stars. If the star is farther away, the shift is much smaller. And in fact, stars are very, very, very far away. And so the shifts are tiny. These angles that we measure it through, and you can imagine um, measuring, you know, draw a line here, and we could maybe measure this angle, like that angle right there. Let's call that uh, P for parallax. Um, if we measure that angle, it's going to be a very small number for a star that is more distant. Now, if we wanted to do this properly, um, we could imagine drawing a triangle here. It would be a right triangle. And we could use trigonometry to um, figure out what the distance is, say, from the sun to the star. And we'll use the sun um, because the sun is in a relatively constant position. Earth is moving. Um, not that it makes a huge difference. But we know one side of the triangle because we know the distance from the Earth to the sun. And we know this angle. If you know trig, you know how you can figure out this side. If you don't know trig, that doesn't matter, um, because it turns out that with stars, there is a very simple shortcut that we can use if we define our units correctly. And that is that the parallax angle, that angle that I drew in the last picture, 
is equal to 1 divided by the distance. There's an inverse relationship here, as you would expect. Something that's farther away has a smaller angle. But you have to use the units correctly. So when we measure our parallax angle, um, we use units that are called arc seconds. If you think about a degree um, when you're looking at angles, imagine dividing that up into 60 pieces. Those would be pretty darn small. Uh, we would call those minutes. And then you take a minute and divide it into 60 pieces, and logically enough, those are called seconds. And we call them arc seconds to distinguish the angle seconds and minutes from uh, time seconds and minutes. Uh, so we can have these parallax angles measured in arc seconds, and it turns out that one arc second is a 3,600th of a degree. That's really, really small. Um, in fact, if you were to hold your finger up at arm's length and divide that into 3,600 pieces, that would be about an arc second. It's tiny. And the distances will be measured in what are called parsecs. Now, a parsec is, it, like light years, it kind of sounds like a time because it's got that seconds in there, but it is actually a distance, and it corresponds to 3.26 light years. Uh, this sounds pretty arbitrary, but it's defined in such a way that it's the distance to an imaginary star whose parallax is exactly one. So parsec stands for a parallax of a second. Um, be careful how you use it, just like light years. It's a distance, not a time. And so if we use these units, we can easily relate the parallax angle and the distance. But again, the parallax angle is really, really, really small. And the farther away the star is, the smaller that angle gets. And even with the best technology that we've got, with space telescopes taking really, really clear pictures of stars and where they are in the sky, we can only measure angles down to a certain point. At a certain point, it's just going to get too small of a shift to see. So parallax as a way of finding distance works, but it only works for the nearest stars because otherwise the parallax angle just gets way too small and we can't do it. So this is a basis for finding distances to stars. It works for nearby ones, but it does not work for faraway stars.